what do you see? Yeah, what do you see? Oh, goodness. That must have felt good. Oh. Welcome to the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I am your host. This is a podcast primarily about knitting, though we do get up to other fiber related topics from time to time. I am coming to you from Henderson, Nevada. This is where I am from and where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three and a half year old son, Angus, our six month old son, Ronan, and our big fat house cat, Oscar. If you are a new viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for checking out this little corner of YouTube. And if you are a returning viewer and subscriber, thank you again for coming back time and time again every time I upload something new here on the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. There are several ways that you can stay in touch here at the Wool Needles Hands channel. You can do so via email and that email address is down in the description box below. You can also find the PO box address for the podcast should you want to send anything physical um, to me for sharing here on the podcast. You can also get in touch with us over on Ravelry. There is a Ravelry group associated with the podcast. I link to it down below in the description box so you can just tap on that link or you can head over to Ravelry and search Wool Needles Hands in the groups tab and you can find us that way. It is a bustling Ravelry group. Lots going on. Three different knit alongs going on right now, so that's lots of fun. And we are going to be having a book club, a, a podcast book club coming up, so you can learn more about that at the end of the podcast, but also on Ravelry as well, so definitely don't forget to check that out. There is a Pinterest page for the podcast as well. It's kind of a way of having like visual show notes. You can see pins of various different things that are mentioned here on the show, and you can link to them um, that way. So it's kind of just a little bit more of a convenience um, if that's something that you're into. And we have a new Pinterest moderator as well. Brittany, who was our previous Pinterest moderator, had some really exciting life changes happen. So she, um, this is no longer a priority for her, and that is so okay because I'm very happy for her. But we do have a new Pinterest moderator, and her name is Steffi. She is from Austria and she goes by Hootie Knits on Instagram. So Steffi, thank you so much for being our Pinterest moderator. You can also find me on Instagram. I am at Wool Needles Hands on Instagram. And you can also find me on Instagram at fiber.for.the.people. That is my hand dyed yarn business, Fiber for the People. You can learn more about Fiber for the People yarn by heading over to Instagram and checking out the Instagram associated with my business there. Or you can head over to fiberforthepeople.com and shop the site, check out the special order order options, check out the colorways and all that kind of good stuff. And speaking of fiber for the people, there is a shop update coming this Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, way different than what's been typical lately, which is Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time or 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm shaking it up a little bit. I'm trying out a new day, um, primarily because my husband went back to work. He was off for the summer. He's a teacher. Um, and so having him home over the summer um, made it kind of easier for me to work um, because he was home more often. And so Saturdays worked really well for us for shop updates. But right now things are shifting a little bit and we're getting used to the new schedule. So we're gonna try Tuesdays and see if that works a little bit for us. So needless to say, the shop update is Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I chose 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time because I feel like that that's an even better kind of um, happy middle ground of a time for everybody, both international and um, in the United States in all time zones. So we're going to just try it out and see how it goes. Definitely don't forget to check it out. Also, if you do happen to check out the shop update on Tuesday, don't forget to use the coupon code WNHLOVE to get 10% off your order. It works once. So if you've already used the coupon, unfortunately, it doesn't work twice. But if you have yet to use the Wool Needles Hands coupon, definitely don't forget to do that on your next order of Fiber for the People yarn. So really quick, some Fiber for the People news. Last update, I featured a brand new sport weight base, which I'm really excited about. It was an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon, sport weight, two ply sport weight, and it's beautiful. Um, but after doing some thinking and, and it flew off the shelf, so I'm really happy that you guys are excited about the sport weight base. I'm really excited about it as well. Um, but some things that I've been thinking about, I offer a Blue Face Luster DK weight base in the shop that is a super wash, but it is very rustic, very sturdy, very springy, really great super wash option for garment knitting. I offer a worsted weight, non super wash base in the shop, which is amazing. It's what I have this hat made out of up here. I'll talk more about that later, um, but it's beautiful. It's called o Omerino and it's great for garment knitting, great for color work. It's nice and sticky, but not too coarse 
So that's awesome. And because many garment knitters prefer, especially those working with color work or cables, prefer to use a non-superwash yarn for their garments, also because it keeps the garment um, resilient uh, and springy, I wanna offer garment-friendly bases on non-superwash or with non-superwash yarns and wools. I wanna make sure that the garment yarns that I offer in the shop um, are going to accommodate those knitters um, as well as accommodate those that are working on things more like shawls or accessories. Therefore, Tweeny, which was the this new sport base is no longer no, uh, superwash, it is now a non superwash option. So nothing has really changed in the base lineup except we've added the mohair um, base that I talked about or I showed in the last update, but that the sport weight base, which was a superwash base previously, is now a non superwash yarn. So you can get a worsted weight um, non superwash as well as a sport weight non superwash. I have in the past offered Whist, which is a non superwash two ply fingering weight yarn, and it is still one. One that I pull out for special orders, but it's not featured in the shop very regularly just because it's not a popular base. Um, typically those fingering weight yarns, I've noticed uh, that people move more towards superwash yarns for that. But the garment um, weight yarns, the sweater weight yarns, those are going to be predominantly um, non-superwash or in the case of the Vigor base, which is the Blue Face Luster base, just really, really hardy and rustic and great for knitting garments. So hopefully that's not too confusing. You can definitely learn more if you sign up for the newsletter. I'm gonna be talking more about that in the new newsletter coming out before the shop update. Also stay posted over on Instagram. I share all of this information as it comes through on Instagram. So I just wanted to keep you guys updated really quickly to let you know um, some of the little yarn based changes that are happening in the shop. But without further ado, I wanna share with you guys a quick look at what is going to be coming to the shop on Tuesday colorway wise. Now this is not going to be your typical yarn sexies um, video segment. This is actually just going to be a montage of photographs that I have um, shown on Instagram of the colorways coming to the shop. I don't have all of the yarn dyed for this update so I don't have those to film right away but this gives you an idea of the colorways that are coming to the shop update on Tuesday. So don't forget to check out the shop update. Head over to fiberforthepeople.com. It is Tuesday, September 18th at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm really, really excited about it. It's going to be a beautiful shop update, a big variety of yarn bases featured. So definitely don't forget to check it out and don't forget to use your coupon. And then also don't forget to head over to Instagram because there is a coupon offered on Instagram um, for first time customers. So, you know, lots of ways to save a little bit of money when you're shopping and also check out Instagram just so you can see more pictures of the beautiful yarn. Some really exciting news happening over here. The Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel has reached 6,000, actually reached and surpassed 6,000 subscribers. And I am so excited. Thank you guys so much for supporting the channel, being a part of this community that's growing over here. Um, every time we hit a new mile marker like this, it just blows my mind. It's super exciting. So thank you guys so much for helping me create this community, create this channel, making it all worthwhile, making it all work. So thank you guys, 6,000 subscribers. It's awesome. I want to do a giveaway with you guys. I have a really amazing um, donated prize that I want to share with you guys. It's it's just a beautiful prize. I can't wait to give it as the 6,000 subscriber giveaway. Plus I have my own um, little coupon that I want to add to the prize to sweeten the pot and a really fun giveaway question. So let me go ahead and share with you guys the giveaway for the 6,000 subscriber milestone. Mina, who hosts the Owl and the Troll podcast, also runs a little subscription business where she sells subscriptions to what she calls knitters treats. And they are little curated packages of goodies for knitters. Um, she sent me a personal postcard explaining to me um, what uh, was in this package. Plus the package comes with a letter um, explaining what's in the package and where it's from. And it's really beautifully put together. The 
products that she puts in the packages, she sources all of them out. They're all very local to her. She is in Finland. So all of the products in here are Finnish products for um, almost for the most part. The, the yarn is all Finnish and oh, it's beautiful. I can't wait to share it. So I want to share with you guys this package and just know that everything in here, um, she curated this whole package herself and there's a theme surrounding this package as well. So this is the theme for this is community for life. And she gives a little card um, to kind of give you an idea of the theme you can see on the side here it says knitters treat on the highway of civilization knitters treat at your service it's so special and like I said the little letter that comes with this explaining everything that's in it is really beautiful um, so let me go ahead and share with you what is in this knitters treat package so the first thing that she has here is a bunch of beautiful beautiful finish yarn it's gorgeous okay so in the package you're getting these beautiful skeins of finish yarn um, from finish wool oh look at those colors they're beautiful so this is by Novita and this is seven brothers I guess that's the yeah that's the name of this yarn seven brothers it is a 70 5% superwash, um, no, excuse me, 75% wool, 25% nylon. It is not superwash. This is um, a natural wool. So 75% wool, 25% uh, nylon, and this is Finnish wool. And then it also is available in this box in black. So really, really great um, pairing. They're really beautiful. So here they are together. Oh, look at that. And like I said, this is um, Novita. So here is the label. Really beautiful. So this is available in this Knitter's Treat package. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't hold up. You get three of the black, two of the blue. And these are, to me it looks like they're kind of like a DK weight yarn, maybe even a sport weight. It's 100 grams, 218 yards, 100 grams, so it's kind of a worsted weight yarn. Yeah, I guess, it, I mean, when I, when I check weights of yarn, I hold them in my fingers and I stretch them like this, because if you let them just sit, you know, without being pulled or tugged, it kind of causes them to plump up and it can be deceiving. Um, but yeah, this is, sure, a worsted weight, heavy DK weight yarn, or a heavy sport weight yarn, worsted weight, beautiful, definitely can do something really lovely with this, absolutely gorgeous. I mean, look at the... Look at the beautiful halo that it has. Really great if you wanted to work up some kind of like a color work motif with these two, because you can tell that it's a nice sticky yarn. It has a nice rustic feel, but still very nice and comfortable. Um, I, I would say this is appropriate for next to skin wear um, if it's really cold where you are. Beautiful. Let's move on and see what else is in this awesome box. Um, she also has provided two hanks of jute yarn. So this is 65% jute, 18% bomul, bomule. I, I think that that's in Finnish and I don't really know what that is. Um, and 17% acrylic. So really cool. Um, lots of really fun applications for jute yarn. I've never worked with jute um, in my crafting experience, but I've seen lots of people on Instagram lately who are doing various different things with jute. And she actually, in the little letter that comes with the Knitter's Treat package, she talks about some of the different things that you can do with jute. And she provides you with um, a website where you can go and see some things that are done with the jute. I think she actually mentions in here, um, crochet baskets. That's right. She talks about how people are doing crochet baskets with jute and it's just really cool. What a, what an awesome thing to add to a box like this to inspire you to try something different. I think this is so thoughtful. So that is going to be in there as well. You're going to get a nice little, um, low acetane hand cream. Perfect for keeping in your knitting or crochet bag when it, especially when the weather gets really cold and your hands start getting really dry. And then some gold sewing slash knitting scissors, the classic little um, bird scissors. And then in this little package, and I don't want to open it because it's been wrapped so nicely into an envelope, she's included some little stitch markers in this little package right here. Really thoughtful. And then also actually a pattern for a pair of Fair Isle mittens or color work, stranded color work mittens that you can create using the yarn that she provides. And I don't want to show you the chart. There is no photograph that comes with the pattern. Um, 
to show you. So you have to take my word for it. There are options in here for various different motifs with the mittens. They look like a very classic Scandinavian style mitten and you guys, they're beautiful. So you get a pattern in here for a pair of um, uh, colorwork mittens. It's beautiful, plus the yarn, plus the jute yarn to try out something different. You get a pair of scissors, some really lovely hand cream, stitch markers, you guys, it's the whole enchilada. So this is going to be coming for the 6,000 subscriber giveaway. And I am also going to be including with that a 30% coupon for fiber for the people yarn so it's a coupon that you can use off your entire order of fiber for the people yarn um, anytime you want I will um, send that to you it'll be a coupon code and, and I will send that to you once you get in touch with me um, after I announce the winner for the giveaway so that will also be included so this is a really hefty prize I'm gonna show you the box that I have this in so you can kind of see it all together um, it's really very lovely I want to put it put it all kind of in here nicely so here here's the whole box so you get all of this beautiful yarn you get the stitch markers the scissors the lotion the pattern plus a link to other patterns as well as a 30% off coupon for fiber for the people yarn so that is what will be coming for the 6,000 subscriber giveaway without further ado here is the giveaway question all right guys this one's kind of convoluted but bear with me because I think the responses are going to be just so much fun to read Imagine that you are in charge of writing out the script for a mystery movie where a particular individual's yarn stash is stolen. The entire stash, everything in the stash is packed in a bag and stolen by a particular person. What I would like you to tell me in the comments down below as a way to participate in the giveaway is where was the stash taken, who stole the stash, and for what purpose? Those are the three things that you have to tell me to participate in the giveaway. You don't have to write complete sentences. I mean, just bullet points, whatever, give it to me. Or you can tell me a whole synopsis, whatever you wanna do, have fun with it. I'm gonna share some of the responses on the next episode of the podcast. Um, but I kinda like whenever I do giveaways like this, I like to make the questions um, worth your time in answering, maybe a little bit uh, thought-provoking, um, entertaining, who knows? So that is gonna be the question for the giveaway. Answer down below in the comment section. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe. You need to be a subscriber to the podcast to win the giveaway prize. So thank you, Mina, for donating this beautiful package to the podcast. I can't wait to give it away for the 6,000 subscriber giveaway. knit-alongs going on over here at the podcast you guys lots of fun things happening the first is the wool needles hands year of hats cal 2018 and what we're doing here is knitting a different hat every month you can find all the information on this knit along and you can get involved over on the Ravelry group so don't forget to check that out it's a lot of fun definitely get involved if you're into knitting hats we just wrapped up August and we are now involved in September so August was where we were knitting gift hats we're kind of getting a jump on our gift knitting it didn't have to be for the holiday Holidays. It's just any hat that you knit is going to be a gift for somebody else. And now we are in September where we are knitting hats with cables. So that's the lowdown on what's going on right now. I need to announce the August winner for the knit along and also show you guys the prize for the September portion of the knit along. Okay, the winner of the August portion of the knit along was Pleasant Flowers with her Jughead hat. This was such an adorable knit. And this is from a, um, this is Archie, I think, the Archie comics. Uh, Jughead was the character that wore kind of like a crown. Um, I don't, I'm not 100% familiar with how, you know, the Archie comics went, but I do remember Jughead kind of had like a crown or a hat that had like a crown brim on it. I don't know, but you can see that this hat has kind of a crown uh, textured motif that runs around the side. Awesome, I love it. So Pleasant Flowers, get in touch with me, comment down below, send me an email, let me know that you've won. If I don't hear from you in a couple of days, I'll go ahead and email you, um, but you have won. So congratulations, you will be winning the prize that I mentioned in the previous episode of the podcast. Congratulations, super excited for you and thank you for participating in the knit along. Okay, for September, we have a prize here for September and I'm really excited to share with you guys. September, we're knitting hats with cables and the prize for September is uh, definitely inspired by fall um, and a little bit of Christmassy holiday in there as well. So you're going to be receiving a project bag by the lovely Nicole who is NSP Designs and her project bags you guys are really really beautiful. Um, she has such an eye for color and contrasting linings. I just love it. Her po um, not pockets excuse me her little handles 
are the perfect size for fitting on your wrist without being too tight. Everything is just great. So and they also, or this also will be coming with two skeins, two fall inspired colorways from Vessel Yarn Co. So these two skeins of yarn will be included in the giveaway as well. I mean, look at this, you guys. Hello, fall, right? Beautiful chocolate, kind of like a hot chocolate almost colored brown. And then this lovely russet, you know, sweet potato flesh type colorway here. It's really beautiful. This one is pumpkin pie and it comes with a little progress keeper that you can see on the business card right there. They both have one. And then this beautiful brown, warm brown color is espresso. Yeah, very appropriate. This is 100% wool sport weight, non superwash. I'm assuming it doesn't say superwash on here. It doesn't feel superwashed. It has a beautiful rustic halo to it. You can see that it still retains that like rustic hardiness whenever it decides it wants to. There we go. Yeah, beautiful. So these are non superwash. They are um, 214 yards, 100 grams. I thought it said 1,100 grams, but that's just a backslash and it looks like a one. I'm like, wow, that's an incredible feat of proportion. Um, yeah, so 274 yards, excuse me, 100 grams. Beautiful, beautiful yarn, Vessel Yarn Company. So this little bundle of yarn and this project bag will be coming to you for the September portion of the knit along, which is super exciting. Two stitch markers, two skeins of yarn, an adorable project bag. What's better than that, guys? Kind of in honor of this particular knit along, I decided, you know, it's cooling down a little bit here. The temperatures have dropped below 100, believe it or not, and that's like fall weather is, is upon us, you guys. So I decided that every once in a while I would go ahead and don um, a hat on the podcast. So I am wearing, and this is not a hat that I knit for the knit along. This is actually um, a hat that I knit late last year, early this year, I think. I can't remember exactly when it was. It's, it's a hat of my own design. Um, I made, I knit it out of the O Merino worsted base by Fiber for the People yarn. It's a non superwash worsted weight base. I love it so much, you guys. This yarn is so beautiful. I want to knit all of the things in this yarn. I have a work in progress I'm going to share with you guys later that I'm knitting in this yarn. It's just, it's everything, guys. It's the bee's knees. And this is the fawn colorway. Fawn over me is the colorway name. Um, and I love it. So that's what I'm doing for this episode of the podcast is wearing a little hat in honor of our Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along. All right, guys, the next make along, I should say, that we have going on right now is the Wool Needles Hands Garland Along. It is where we are crocheting or knitting garlands for the holidays or not for the holidays. We're just making garlands for whatever purpose until the first of the year next year. So we have from now until January 1st, we're just making garlands. That's pretty much it. And I love this concept. I love this whole, you know, idea of doing something like this, something a little bit different to shake up your routine, to shake up your projects just a little bit, something easy, kind of, I guess, if you've ever done anything like this before. And the whole reason I decided to do this was because I wanted to crochet a granny square garland for my sister-in-law who's expecting a baby in November. I've talked about this before in previous episodes of the podcast, but that was kind of what you know initiated this whole idea. And so we went with it and we decided that we're gonna do this as a knit along or a make along here on the podcast. So super excited about that. There aren't any, I haven't seen any works in progress pop up yet. I think most of what's going on right now because it just started on the 1st of September. Most of what's happening right now is just kind of figuring out the garlands that are going to be worked on. Um, so that's kind of what's going on. So if you want to get involved in this, head over to the Ravelry group, jump on the threads, see what kinds of things other people are talking about and participate over there and then start working up your garlands and sharing them over there. And I'll start sharing them here on the podcast once some start coming through in the finished object thread. I wanted to share with you guys a resource that I found while I was shopping at Joann's the other day. Um, perfect for what we're doing. And especially considering I wanted to do a granny square garland, this resource is just perfect for that. So it is called Crochet Kaleidoscope, Shifting Shapes and Shades Across 100 Motifs. Pretty much, you guys, it is a dictionary of granny squares. It's amazing. And it's such beautiful color therapy just to flip through this. So it has, and I have um, my little practice granny square marking my page, but it's just loaded and I'll just flip through it so you can see with granny squares and all of the different like patterns for them. And then it also gives you some patterns for um, using, applying those granny squares in larger projects. So it's really, 
really lovely. I want to show you some of the larger, so you get like a pattern for something like this. How like anthropology is that? Like, oh, oh my gosh, I love it so much. I actually want to say that anthropology was selling, no, maybe it wasn't anthropology. Maybe it was Wool in the Gang, I think, has a pattern for a granny square a shawl, I want to say. I don't know, but it's, ugh. yeah. Hello, when you're having a down moment and you need some color therapy, just flip through a book like this. So just lots of fun ideas for how you can apply um, these particular like motifs in larger crafts. Plus you get patterns for granny squares. It's really great. So it is called um, Crochet Kaleidoscope, Shifting Shapes and Shades Across 100 Motifs by Sandra Eng. So really cool resource. I have worked up just a teeny tiny bit. I've just now recently gotten started on this because I have a couple finished objects, so I freed up some time. But I've worked up a little teeny tiny portion of a granny square so far. So that's all I have. It's not finished. It still has, um, oops, it still has about, I think, three more um, borders to go around, three more rounds. But I love it. It's really a lot of fun doing this. It's taking a little bit of time for me only because I'm not familiar with reading crochet charts, but you know, it's it's not really that hard. You just, you really have to make sure that your yarn weight and your need, your hook are appropriate together. Otherwise you're gonna be kind of fighting the weight of the yarn when you're creating these. If, if you've done, you know, granny squares, you know what I'm talking about. It definitely, there's potential there for um, kind of getting getting too tight with your crochet gauge. I don't know, but I'm really enjoying uh, kind of the process. I just started, so I, I, can, I can't speak too much about the process, but I think it's gonna be really cute. I'm, my color palette for the garland that I'm creating, it's gonna look like this. So these are yarns that I've had kind of in my stash, like baby knitting yarns, they're cotton. Um, and I really like this particular color palette. There's actually going to be one other yarn that I'm using for another project right now, but I have more of it. So this will be the color palette that makes up the granny squares going into my garland. So the distribution of colors will be different in each granny square, of course, um, but it'll all kind of stay in this color palette. So I think that's really nice. I really like the idea of doing that. And I like that it's going to be made um, in cotton because if it's been hanging for a while, it might start to get dull and dingy um, from dust. It can be thrown in the washing machine and perhaps you know ironed out and hung back up and it's like brand new again. So just some little things that I've been considering when it comes to deciding what I'm going to be doing for my granny square garland. But that's kind of where I'm at with that right now. But if you are interested in participating, definitely check out Ravelry for more information on the Wool Needles Hands Garland Along 2018. So today I am drinking something a little bit different. It is a holy basil tea by Organic India and it's called Tulsi. I send this out in um, orders as well when I send out the orders for Fiber for the People and I had yet to try it. And so I decided I wanted to try it today. These teas are mainly therapeutic teas. They're not necessarily like yummy teas or teas that you drink primarily for the flavor. They're more of a therapeutic type tea and this is a stress relieving and purifying tea and it is um, caffeine free, holy basil, certified organic. So I am actually going to take my first sip of this right now because I haven't had a chance to do that yet. So I'm going to tell you um, from a first sip standpoint how I like it. It's really good. It's um, not anything that I was, you know, imagining necessarily. When holy basil, I was imagining something much more herbal tasting. Um, herbal, uh, like herby, I think is more fun. I'm like, I don't even know if that's a word, but something more green uh, and, and not quite as as mellow as this. This almost reminds me of like a green tea, and it's and it's not a green tea, um, but it's really lovely. Wow, that's very very good. Um, really subtle, really mellow, perfect for sipping without feeling like um, it's there's no bitterness at all. It's just, it's really, it's really lovely. So I like that. So if you need a new tea to try, Tulsi um, by Organic India is something to try. And I'm drinking it today out of this Moroccan inspired uh, tea cup or excuse me, coffee mug. 
that I have here. This, a little known fact, is actually the first coffee mug I ever featured on the podcast. So way back in episode one, I believe, I'm almost positive, this was the coffee mug I was drinking out of. Um, ugh, I love a good cobalt blue color, so I think that always catches my eye, but yeah. So that is what I'm drinking today. It is very yummy. Uh, take it from me, just tried it right here, right now. Hear it first here, um, but it's good. So Tulsi, India Organic, no. Yeah, Organic India, tomato, tomato. So it's been two weeks since I've podcasted. And I know that this podcast is getting up a little bit later than it typically is. Um, and I also have not posted a vlog in a little while. And that's all been on purpose um, when it comes to the vlog. If you frequent the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel, you know that I do post um, additional videos to the podcast, such as tips from the dyeing studio where I share um, tips on dyeing yarn. I also do vlogs where I share my process for dyeing yarn or I just vlog about other, you know, non-dyeing related things. But lately I haven't been doing those and I had mentioned in the past that I was going to be uploading weekly and that hasn't happened for the last three weeks. I kind of took the last three weeks and decided that I was going to dial things back just a little bit because I felt like, I don't know, I felt like I really needed to just be honest with myself about what I was able to do and feel good about at the same time. And I've mentioned in the past that I would be uploading weekly um, with a podcast every two weeks. The podcast is always gonna be every two weeks. I upload a podcast every two weeks. That's a consistency thing for me. Um, moving forward, I always wanna have my podcast out every two weeks unless something just comes up that I can't control, obviously. Um, but the vlogging every single week was really starting to take its toll, especially since um, my husband went back to work and I am a stay-at-home mom to two little boys and I run a business for my home which has picked up uh, picked up speed quite a bit <laughs> recently and so things have been a little bit busy with that and then also trying to maintain you know my own time for knitting um, for just being with my family for having my own time you know I have to kind of balance all of that out and so I think the last three weeks um, I kind of just took and I said you know I'm gonna dial it down I'm gonna focus on my making, on my dying, and my business, and my family. Obviously, my family is always first, and dial down the weekly um, vlogging and tips from the dying studio for a while. So I'm not, um, I'm not saying that I'm not gonna be doing those things anymore because that is definitely not the case. I have so much more to share with you guys when it comes to coming from my dying studio, tips from the dying studio, my vlogs, all of that. I have so much to share with you guys. It just may not always be on a weekly basis in regards to those things. So just to kind of keep you updated on what's been going on over here, that's that's all it is. It was just a planned little um, vacation from vlogging for a little bit to kind of reinvigorate the creative juices, to give myself a little bit of a break to focus on my making, um, and it's been really good. And I love that because it's allowed me to finish some things, um, to start some new things that I can share with you guys here on the podcast, and it's just, it's always good to do that, to step back, dial things down a little bit. So, you know, just expect that when it comes to the Fiber Journey channel here. Um, just expect that things, uh, there will be new content every two weeks because I'll post a, a, a podcast every two weeks, and I will be uploading additional material material um, monthly, but it just may not be on a weekly basis every single month. So just some, just some things that have been going on over here. You know, when you're a stay at home mom to two little boys, one who is six months old and one who's three and a half years old, um, things can get crazy and busy and uh, you just have to retain some of your sanity and, you know, slice things off the to-do list, I guess you could say. So that's that's kind of what I've been doing and and I feel good about it. I feel really good that I've taken a step back and kind of taken a break. I have um, a really full plate and so making sure I don't pile on any more than I can manage is, is important. So that's kind of my, uh, you know, yammering for you <laughs> about what's been going on over here. So let's go ahead and move on and start talking about some finished objects that I have. All right, you guys, I have finished objects to share with you guys today and I'm super excited about it. I have been working really hard on this particular item, which is a baby blanket since May. I cast it onto this in May and I've been working on it, um, you know, in, in, in amongst other projects, but I have been working on it since May pretty consistently. 
and I'm super, super excited to share it with you. And you guys, I have a tale of yarn chicken to share with you guys um, about this. And also just some information, some things I've learned about adding a ruffle to a blanket that I would never have expected. So let's go ahead and talk a little bit about my granny stripe baby blanket that I crocheted for my sister-in-law who is expecting in November. She is the same um, person for whom I am going to be crocheting the granny square garland. So she's getting lots of goodies um, for that little baby that is coming soon. Um, but here it is. So I'm, I can't hold this whole thing up. Uh, actually, I don't know, maybe I can't. Let's, let's see what I can do. Okay, so here is the blanket, da, da, da. look at that, with its pretty ruffle. I'm gonna turn it this way for whatever reason. I think the horizontal arrangement of the stripes is really pretty. So that's it. So it is a pretty random assortment of colors. I did not stripe consistently. These are just mini skeins that I pulled from my mini skein collection, and I just started crocheting with them, and just made it random. I didn't color manage here at all, other than just deciding what color was gonna come when. And so that's kind of what I have happening here. And I love the result, you guys. I'm really super into it. I'm looking at it on the screen and I just think it's so beautiful. And I'm really happy I went with this pretty silver um, border here. It's so lovely. It's a 70% um, mohair, 30% acrylic fiber by Cascade Yarns. It's really beautiful. They don't make it anymore, and that's a big part of what I'm about to tell you guys with my experience with this yarn. Um, but first of all, I got the idea for this pattern from Attic24. So that's Lucy at Attic24. She has a pattern for a granny stripe um, blanket and hers is a little bit different I kind of adapted mine it's obviously not the same dimensions not the same color management um, not the same weight of yarn whatever but I um, that's kind of where I got the I guess you could say where I learned how to do the granny stripe stitch pattern and then I just made up my own dimensions and worked from there. And you can find that information on Ravelry because I have updated my Ravelry and I'm keeping it updated. So all of that information is there as well, along with which hook size I use and the yarn and all of that. All of the yarn that you see in the actual blanket is Fiber for the People yarn. So this is all from my own collection of yarn um, for Fiber for the People. These are, for the most part, these are regular colorways that come into the shop, but there are several... Um, not several, I'm sorry. There are a few Lucky Strike colorways in here as well, which are one-of-a-kind colorways. Um, you can learn more about that over at fiberforthepeople.com. But I'm so happy to have this off the hook for a, a few reasons. The first main reason is just the sense of accomplishment to have this finished um, and to really love it as much as I love it. Um, but also because I'm just, I was ready to be finished working on it. I was ready to move beyond it. And so that feels really good. And I'm also really happy as well because after blocking it and I just steam blocked this, I used my steamer um, and I just steam set it on um, some blocking mats. I didn't soak it and lay it out and that's just because I was impatient and I wanted to see how it worked up. And, and I don't think I need to do that. I think it looks just fine the way it is. This section, if you've been watching the podcast, I had some concerns about this yellow section running right here because that yarn, uh, I mistook that yarn for a, fring a fingering weight yarn when I added it to the blanket, and it is not. It is a DK weight yarn, and so it was kind of a ways after the fact that I realized that because it was creating little bulges in the fabric. Well, it blocked out beautifully, and so I'm not worried about that at all. You can't even tell it's beautiful, it's lovely. So that is my blanket. Now, here is something that I learned when it comes to adding a ruffle to a blanket. So this is a, so I started with a single crochet border and then I added sets of three single crochets and then I added sets of or one double crochet and then sets of two double crochet. So that is four different rounds. It takes a long time to add a ruffle border to a, a baby blanket. I can't imagine doing this on a blanket of a full size, I don't know why you would do this on a full size blanket, but anything larger than this would be so tedious and it would take so long because it's really, gosh, it's so time consuming. 
And then also too, what's crazy about this is how much yarn it requires to do this. So I had a 100 gram ball of this mohair Cascade Yarns Bolasine fiber. I had one 100 gram ball in my stash. And I was convinced, and this is probably just coming from a place of ignorance because I'm not a veteran crocheter by any means, I was convinced that would be enough to create a crochet border. I mean, that's a whole skein of yarn. Yeah, no, <laughs> not even close. It probably got me one and a half rounds. Not even that, no, not even that. Um, and, and when it started running out, I was thinking like, this can't possibly be. There's obviously not enough here for me to finish the whole ruffle because I knew I had a certain amount left. But I was thinking like that, I just used this beautiful yarn. It was a $10 ball of yarn and, and price is not an issue here. This is something that's going to be an heirloom piece in the family. It's fine. It's beautiful. I don't mind at all, but just, you know, for future reference moving forward, like when you think about the yarn that you're going to use for a ruffle that you're going to add to a piece, you really have to think about that. So that was one $9 ball of yarn, not even nine, I think it was $10. It was like nine ninety nine. One ten dollar ball of yarn um, that had been in my stash forever. So it's not like I, whatever, burned ten dollars. Okay, we we digress. Moving forward. But ten dollars for not even half of the ruffle that you're gonna add. So then I get another ball. Fortunately, I get another ball. I didn't have another ball in my stash. So I phoned my mom and was like, hey mom, do you have this particular, you know, mohair acrylic yarn in your stash? Because she has lots of those like really beautiful mohair yarns, real luxury yarns in her yarn stash. And I was, I kind of had this feeling I'd seen it. So I, whatever, took a risk and asked her. It's not really a risk. I just thought that she might have it. She looked, she got back in touch with me. She said she had it. Perfect. I'm like, ah, oh, awesome. Saved. Great. She brings it over and I start working on it. And I finished this blanket yesterday. And yesterday um, was when I ran out of the second ball of this yarn. So that's 200 grams of yarn. And I didn't even finish the ruffle. But this is where things get funny. Not really funny. But for me, it was just kind of like, ugh, you know, like, really? So anyway, I, I see that I'm going to run out of my second ball and when I realize that I think I'm like I don't know I think I'm like here okay let's just say I'm here and I still had this much to go and this much to go um, and then I think halfway the other side so whatever I had about three-fourths of a round left and I knew I was gonna run out I didn't have much left because crochet just eats up yarn like crazy so I look online to see if they make this yarn anymore and they don't and I knew that they probably didn't. It was really old yarn for my stash, something I had picked up when I first started knitting. Um, so no luck there. And so then I'm thinking, okay, well, what, what do I have in my stash? Do I have anything else that could work? Nothing. Um, I don't have any, my fiber for the people stock of the mohair yarn that I just had in the last update was depleted of the gray color that would have been somewhat similar to this. Plus it's not the right weight. This is a worsted weight yarn. Um, so that wasn't an option. So I figured I'm going to go to Joann's. I'm going to see what they have that is even remotely close to what we have here. So I pack up the kids and we take a last minute trip. I and mean, that's not like an easy feat when you have, uh, you know, a six month old and a three and a half year old who really doesn't want to go to the craft store. So we head over to Joann's and I'm looking through the yarn section. I'm not finding anything, nothing. It's either the wrong weight or the wrong color. Finally, I find something that I think could be my saving grace that might work. And it was a long shot really because the fiber content is not the fiber content of this, but I really at this point, I didn't, it didn't matter. Um, so I found this. So this is by Lion Brand and it is, <laughs> it's so funny. It's a shawl and a cake. So it's just a yarn that has like a, you know, um, a gradient kind of dye job happening here and you knit it up and it creates, you know, a shawl perfect quantity for that, whatever. I didn't care. I just noticed that it had gray, um, similar. And I had brought the, sh the blanket with me. So I noticed that it had grays in there. And I figured if I work cleverly, I can pull out just the yarn that matches the fiber on my already established ruffle and just use that. So that's actually what I did, which is why I have this little wad of this yarn here. So what I did, and this is silly, is I started pulling from the middle 
and um, pulling out the yarn that wouldn't match until I got to the yarn that remotely matched and just started cutting and using and cutting and using. It was just a hot mess of an issue, just crazy, crazy way of, you know, adding new yarn and finishing your project. But a huge win on my end because this is what I ended up using most of. So look at that color. And when I, okay, so when you look at them right next to each other like this, like, yeah, you can tell there's a difference. But you guys, when it comes to having like a ruffle and the shape of the ruffle and the kind of the distortion of the fabric, it's really not very noticeable. So I challenge you to, and I'm just going to run through the ruffle, I challenge you to see it, see if you can notice it. So I'm going to go ahead and start at a corner and I'm just going to pull the ruffle through. Look at that. It's all the ruffle. We're almost around the whole thing. It's a really beautiful ruffle. I love making, I love the shape of the ruffle. I love watching it kind of take shape as I work it. So there we go. Did you see it? Did you see the, the yarn <laughs> that I used to substitute what I didn't have? I'm thinking that you probably didn't notice it or if you did notice it, you also noticed how similar it looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the yarn. Now when I show it to you, it's definitely going to be more obvious, but whatever. That's not the point. It's neither here nor there. So here is the original and here is the new. So what I'm holding in my hand right now, this, all of this to this corner here, that is all um, the new yarn. And it goes and it goes it kind of gets a little bit darker right here and then we're back at the original yarn right there so I am so happy that it worked out because I wanted to be finished with this I didn't want to have to wait for a similar yarn to come in the mail and then finish it I just wanted to be done and I feel like this is a really great lesson in just acknowledging the fact that this is a handmade piece it's not going to be perfect and when it all boils down to it, just have it finished. Just get it finished. Nobody's going to notice. Um, this is definitely not the type of item that that kind of thing really matters all that much. And, and you don't even have to worry. I mean, it's not even the same fiber content. I think that the yarn running through this like fuzzy material, because I know it's not wool. I think that's a cotton string, like a cotton like thread of some kind and then there's this like fuzzy fiber that runs along it that's you know creating that gray color it's just so far from the actual fiber content of my original ruffle but it worked you guys like you can't even tell and I think it's awesome so super super excited about this really happy that I chose to add a ruffle to the border I think it kind of adds a little bit of a vintage flair gives it that like I don't know anthropology look to it it's just really pretty so pretty so perfect for a new little girl i love it i love it so much so that is my granny stripe baby blanket it is done and i'm so happy with it happy to be moving on to new things but yeah so awesome all right my next work in progress is my little hat that this is actually my hat for the august portion of the wool needles hands year of hats knit along 2018 and this is a kind of an original design. I didn't keep track of anything in this. I didn't take notes. Um, so it's not something that will be recreated as a pattern. I'm not going to write this as a pattern and publish it. I might use this as maybe like a jumping off point for inspiration for a hat in the future or for something. Um, but this is just me having some fun flying by the seat of my pants and I love it so much. I'm calling it Lou's Unicorn Poof Hat. Um, and I call it that only because the yarn um, reminded me of when you hear people say like unicorn farts. <laughs> I don't know, it just reminded me of that. So this was the yarn that I used for this hat. And it's really beautiful. It's just like a really whimsical, um, like purple, lots of like blues and yellows and pinks. It's kind of a rainbow of pastel colors with a really pretty fuzzy fiber held together. And it made for a really beautiful hat with a lot of fun textures. So here is Lou's, which is my niece. This is going to be her Christmas hat. Lou's unicorn poof hat. And I love it so much. And this pom-pom, you guys, I'll talk about that in just a second. But here, 
here is the hat and it is beautiful. So you can see I kind of played around with texture. This was going to be a Constellate hat by Hunter Hammerson, but I decided that that pattern just wasn't for me. Um, and I, at the point that I had made that, the point where I had made that decision, I had already done the ribbing. So I kept the ribbing in this hat here and just added my own design. Um, so you can see the texture. We have a little seeded rib happen happening right here. Some bobbles going on, some more seeded rib, some little eyelets some more seated rib. And then up at the very top, I used a Latvian braid, which I learned um, how to make from uh, Diana Walla. She is the host of the Paper Tiger channel here on YouTube. She is Cake and Vikings on Instagram. She knows so much about Norwegian yarn, about Norwegian knitting techniques, Fair Isle or um, stranded color work techniques. She's amazing. Love her channel. Definitely check it out. But I needed to learn how to do this for another pattern, another cast on that I'm gonna share with you guys in a little bit. And so I decided, since I already knew how to do it, I would add it to this little hat, since this is pretty much a fly by the seat of my pants hat. And I love the way that it kind of topped off the texture of this hat. It serves as a nice little boundary line for um, the, the body of the hat, for the texture portion, and then from this to the stock neck crown. I just think it's a really cool boundary line separating those two things. And it looks really pretty the way the hat hangs. I've, um, this hat fits an adult head, a, a small adult head nicely, but the way that it fits um, a little toddler and the way that it's going to fit my niece is even cuter because it's a lot more slouchy. I put it on Angus to see what it um, looked like. I just think it's so adorable. I love it so much and I really think that she's gonna love this. She's super into unicorns and mermaids and really girly things like that. And so I think this is just right down her alley, especially with this fun pom-pom happening here. So this, um, I made the pom-pom kind of, it's, it's made out of 100% wool and, um, single ply. So the reason that's why the pom-pom kind of has that like raggy look to it. When you make a pom-pom out of wool, it actually tends to not fluff up as much as it would if you made it out of like an acrylic yarn. So I made this out of wool because I wanted it to have more of that like raggy look to it and it really just hit the nail on the head with the way it looks. So I held um, the yarn that I used to make the hat together with this insane color of kind of like neon purple pink by Hedgehog Fibers. This is the Sorry Not Sorry Hedgehog Fibers um, colorway. So I held these two together to make that pom-pom. And you guys, I really think it just was beautiful. I was thinking I was just going to make a pom-pom with this. Um, and I think that that would have been way fun, like would look really, really cute together. But then I was like, I don't know, I wanna bring that color of the actual hat back up into the pom-pom. So that's how it turned out. So I love this so much. I love the texture of this hat. Um, the lights might be blowing it out a little bit, making it look like you can't really see the texture with the yarn, but in person you can, it really pops. It's really beautiful. But yeah, super happy with this. So I'm calling this Lou's Unicorn Poof Hat. Again, this is not a pattern um, that has been written. It is just my own little, you know, playing around with texture, using some techniques that I had just recently learned. So that's pretty much what that is. But it is a finished object and I'm super excited about it. And it's nice to have one gift for Christmas um, you know, in the bag. So that is, that is that. So super excited about my little hat finished object. All right, you guys, I have some serious works in progress to share with you, one of which I am working on right now. Two of the new cast-ons that I'm about to show you aren't, they're new because they're new projects, but it's the same yarn I was using for two previous projects that I have just recently frogged. So I don't think that that really counts, to be honest. But when I took my little break from weekly vlogging, it caused like my creative juices to just overflow and I wanted to cast on all the things. I've been watching all of the podcasts and being so inspired by everybody in this online knitting community and all of the projects that they're working on. And so I just decided like I want to, um, a couple of things. I want to start embracing garment knitting, um, taking that a little bit more seriously, start kind of progressing my skill set a little bit in regards to garment knitting. Um, and so that was like a big thing for me. I wanted to make sure that I was taking that really seriously. Um, but I also wanted to just follow my, 
follow my impulses, I guess, my creative impulses when it comes to the projects that I'm working on. So I don't know, I could just ramble on and on about that, I guess. But what I'm trying to say is that I have been inspired to cast on to some new projects and, um, and I'm okay with that. So. Okay, so the first work in progress I wanna share with you guys is some baby knitting. This is actually from my copy of Elizabeth Zimmerman's um, Knitter's Almanac. It is a year of knitted things. It's kind of, she walks you through, it's almost like a journal, a diary, um, but she's walking you through um, month by month different projects that you can knit for an entire year. And it's a really lovely read. Um, I've just lined my copy because it was starting to become a little worn down. I just lined it with a plastic kind of book jacket, I guess you could say. I just used a Ziploc bag because I was a little paranoid that it would just become more and more damaged. This is actually a first edition of this book. Um, so it's really kind of precious to me. Elizabeth Zimmerman is a really in a big inspiration for me when it comes to kind of my approach to knitting. She has such a an ease about her and the way she writes about knitting and writes about designing and, and it's it's really inspiring. But anyway, I was kind of thumbing through this and what caught my attention were these cute little um, baby leggings right here. And I was, the reason why I guess that caught my attention is, you know, I know the weather is starting, is going to start cooling down here and it does get very cold here. I mean, we can dip down into the twenties easily um, at night in the winter and it gets really cold. And even in the fall, it starts to cool down pretty significantly. So um, for the kids, you know, they need long sleeves and long pants, not always a coat. For quite a while, we don't need coats, but we need long sleeves and long pants. And so I thought for Ronan, who's our six month old, I wanted to have pants for him um, that would have little footies on them that were easy to just pull on over a onesie or even over um, little leggings that he already has on. Just as an extra layer of protection against, you know, the cool air, if we go for a walk, something like that, just really simple. And so I decided I was going to work up a pair of these little baby leggings. And she um, has a little section in the book where she talks about them. She talks about how she came up with the formula for them. It's just really fun to read. So I definitely recommend if you don't have the Knitter's Almanac, just to have it. It's a great book to have in your collection. She's You could just read this like you would read a book without knitting anything here and still really enjoy it. So anyway, I just took her pattern, which is really simple and straightforward, and I cast it on to a little pair of baby leggings. Super, super simple. Now, um, this isn't a very exciting color. It's kind of just like a basic like oatmeal color that I have going on here, but it's a cotton yarn. And the reason why I kind of went with a simple color was because I figured I could put it over any different onesie that he might be wearing. Um, I'm going to jazz it up with this kind of really pretty teal um, color here for the I-cord uh, drawstring. So I'll do that, but um, I, I like the color just because it's simple. But it's such an easy construction. It's knit in one piece, um, really easy. Just raglan increases here at the crotch, some waist, some short row shaping back here uh, for the back of the pants. Really high-waisted little numbers, these little things, but super, super easy. And this cotton yarn that I'm using, I really love. Now, I could have knit this out of a wool yarn. It just doesn't get that cold. Um, he will be fine wearing these um, over maybe another little pair of leggings that he has on for most of the time. When it gets really cold is in um, January and February. And then I might consider working up a pair of these and maybe a little bit of a thicker, maybe a worsted weight wool yarn um, just to have if we go to baseball games or softball games or something like that. Um, that's a really good thing for outside. But for right now, for the immediate you know, future, this is perfect um, and this will fit him really well. They look kind of small. He is a chunky little guy, um, but they, they'll stretch significantly when I block them. And so I'm not too worried about that, but they will have um, a little bit more of a leg and then a cinched ankle and then a nice little footy at the bottom. So I'm super excited about these. It's been, you know, I've the only baby knitting I've done recently has been, you know, for my um, niece, the baby blanket that I just finished. Um, and then the baby blanket that I did for Ronan before he was born. Um, but I haven't really done any garment baby knitting ever. And so I'm really happy to kind of work on this. And I've said in the past, it was like something I, proclaimed in the past that I wasn't into baby knitting. It just wasn't for me. I didn't see the purpose, you know, in knitting something for a baby that they were just going to get dirty and you're going to have to wash all the time. 
but that's why they make baby yarn. That's why they make cotton yarn and things that are washable for little babies so you can wash them. And as soon as I cast it onto these, I like, I don't know, it just opened up my, my eyes to baby knitting and how fun that can be. And I actually have my eye on another little pattern um, that I want to knit for my niece who is um, expected in November. And it is by Pippi and Eve uh, Patterns, and it is the Sammy Sun Suit. I'll go ahead and pop it up on the screen. Um, it's a really adorable little onesie type sun suit. And I think this is totally appropriate for, you know, you know any sex of child. It can be a boy or a girl. You could just change the color, I guess, depending. Um, but I definitely want to work that up for summertime, both for my new niece coming and for Ronin. I think it would be just adorable on a little boy in the summer as well. I don't know. So I think I've gotten the itch to do some baby knitting. And also too, I've been watching the Fiber Tales podcast and she's doing a little knit along over there, the Tiny Human Knits knit along or tiny I can't remember the name of the knit along but she's hosting a knit along and it's just all baby things because she's expecting a baby very soon and so I don't know it's just I guess it's inspired me to do some baby knitting so I have a few things in mind but these little leggings I'm so excited um, to have them done it, they'll be done in no time this is such a fast knit I think I finished from the waistband to all the way down here at the base of the crotch I think I did all of that in like a day I did some knitting in the early part of the day and then we watched a couple episodes of a show in the later part of the day and I got that far. So they are flying off the needles. Really great car knitting. It's all stockinette stitch and working with this yarn is a dream. It's a really great cotton yarn to work with. This is by Bernat. Um, it's softy baby cotton. You can pick it up at Joann's. I used it for the baby blanket that I knit for Ronan before he was born, the summer sidewalks blanket. Ugh, I just, I love it so much. It's such a dream to knit with. I'm actually working these up she doesn't offer a variety of sizes, she, but, but she does tell you if you do want to go up in a size or down in a size, like how to do that and what to consider. Um, this is a DK weight yarn and I'm actually working it up on a size, I want to say this is a size, well, let's check, I have my little needle gauge here. And I have all this information on Ravelry as well, I just can't remember off the top of my head. This is, I believe, a size six. Yeah, so wait, no, nope, size five. So this is a size five needle. This is a gauge roller. This is a size five needle and this is a DK weight yarn. So I actually didn't even consider, I just assumed that the size would work out when I looked at the stitch count that she had. It was an 84 stitch count. So I figured DK weight yarn, size five needle, 84 stitches should definitely fit him. And I think I just got lucky. So you might want to swatch it out and see. Um, but it worked for me. He's six months old. He's, um, not crazy chunky, but he's perfectly chunky in my opinion. So if you have a little one that size, um, just work up what she has in the book and you should be fine. And again, knitting stretches. So you can always, you know, stretch it a little bit, but I really love these. So if you're looking for a fun little baby knit, definitely check out the baby. She calls them the baby longies. Um, and they're perfect. And they're in Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac. Okay, I'm really excited about this next work in progress because it is, because it is a first when it comes to um, adding new skills to my skill set. I have worked stranded color work in the past and I actually have a work in progress that's hibernating right now um, and it is a significant portion of a stranded color work hat. So I could say that that was my first, you know, stranded color work knitting. However, when I worked that hat, I didn't know anything about color dominance. I didn't know anything about, you know, where to position your yarns. I just kind of was flying by the seat of my pants, primarily teaching myself how to knit with two hands, um, holding the yarn in two different hands. And so that was kind of the purpose for that particular hat. So I'm not really counting that when it comes to having done stranded color work, only because now I feel like I'm so much more like educated on the process of doing stranded color work than I was then. Whatever, that's, I mean, that doesn't really matter all that much. But this, I'm really, really excited about this, um, this hat. And this, um, it, not only about the hat and just having done stranded color work, but also the skills that I'm, that are being built with this. So definitely check out Diana Walla at Paper Tiger, like I mentioned earlier, because she is not only the writer of this pattern, but she does the Latvian braid, tells you about how to do the Latvian braid, has a whole tutorial, but she talks to you a lot about stranded color work on her channel. There's a whole video about stranded color work and she's incredibly knowledgeable. You can learn so much um, in just the time it takes you to watch this 30 minute video. 
Um, and so definitely check her out. So this is my hoopla hat. I saw this hat when I was watching the Yarngasm podcast with Kristen. She um, had talked about, um, I, I'm not exactly sure where she saw it, um, maybe on just Ravelry or whatever, but it was in um, one of the editions of Pom Pom Magazine. So Diana had this in Pom Pom Magazine. Kristen was showing it on her podcast and I saw it and I was like, that is what I wanna work. I have yarn that I wanna use. That's the hat that I wanna make. So this is um, the hoopla hat. Now I'm gonna pop up a picture here of the hoopla hat from the pattern page. So you can see the difference in the color choices that Diana used um, in comparison to what I have going on here. Now I am using O Merino Worsted, which is the same yarn that I have in the hat that I was wearing at the beginning of the podcast. It is a 100% non-superwash worsted weight base. It is a merino yarn. It's a really beautiful yarn, um, nice and soft because it is a merino, but it is still hardy and rustic and sticky enough that you can work color work with it really beautifully. So I love that. So I had two skeins of this in my stash in these really pretty pastel colors. Now these are Lucky Strike colors um, that I carry in the shop. This is kind of a waste not, want not approach to dyeing yarn. I use leftover dye stock from, from regular colorways. Any kind of dye particles that are on my tools, I rinse it into water, use that as a dye stock and dye the colorways. You can learn all about this over on the shop site, but to whatever, what it comes down to is that these are one of a kind colorways. And I really wanted to use these in something like right away. They were inspiring me. I loved them together. Um, and so I just wanted to put them into a project. Now, I know that they are not really dramatic in regards to their contrast, but I really like the subtle difference. I'm okay with the subtle contrast. I think it's a really pretty, I don't know, it gives a little bit of an antique vibe to it. I don't even know if that's the right word, but I like it. I like the subtle difference. I love the little Latvian braid that happens here and the way that the colors, the subtle differences in colors kind of work on that. I'm just really happy with it. And I know some of you might be thinking like, mm, I don't know, that's too subtle for all the work that's involved. And you might be right, but I'm totally happy with it. This is actually going to be a gift for my sister-in-law for Christmas, and I know she's going to love this. It's just perfect for her. I'm gonna to top it with a really pretty pom-pom, and it's just gonna be perfect for her. But it's just cool because it's a color work hat. It's one of my first, and I think that I'm doing a really good job with it. I mean, I know what color dominance is now. I know that, you know, where I hold the dominant color is really important. The dominant color always comes from the left. You can learn all of this over on Paper Tiger. Um, but I feel like going forward with this, I kind of know what I'm supposed to know in order to do this. My tension might be a little bit of a thing because I feel like um, ever since I started like s flicking the yarn, my tension loosened up quite a bit anyway, but I do feel like my tension might be a little loose in here because I can see when I stretch the fabric, it's a little gappy. Um, but again, I'm okay with that considering it's not a big deal. And had the, the color contrast been much more stark, I don't think you would notice the tension issue as much. Um, and again, you know, blocking can hide like crazy mistakes. So I'm not too worried about it. And these aren't even crazy mistakes. I'll go ahead and let you see my floats because I know that that's a thing. Um, but I look at my floats and I think, yeah, they're pretty even. They're pretty consistent. You guys, I'm just really happy with it. I like how when you look at the floats, you can see the pattern, like kind of the negative version of the pattern come through. But look, they're nice, they're even, they're pretty consistent, not too tight. This pattern is really great if you're just starting out color work as well because there, there's almost zero um, portions where you have to go any longer than three stitches. So I haven't had to catch any of my floats. Um, I just don't think it's, it's not gonna be necessary for the duration of the pattern. So it's super easy in that regard. It's only two colors. Um, there are breaks of rows of stock net stitch in just a single color, so that's super easy. But yeah, excellent pattern. Definitely recommended if you've not done color work or maybe you're just kind of getting your feet wet with it. Really great pattern. I love Diana's work on, check her out on Instagram. She's super inspiring. 
definitely check out Paper Tiger on YouTube. It's really worth it. So this is the hoopla hat. I started it, I made tons of progress on it, and then I put it down um, for a day or two so I could finish my blanket and lose little hat. But I am so excited to pick this back up again. This is also going to be, um, it's not really a contribution for the Wool Needles Hands um, year of hats cal because it doesn't fall into september it doesn't have a cable so for those of you that are participating in september if you learn how to do a latvian braid and you want to use that in a september hat perhaps you are going to knit another hat or you have yet to knit a september hat i will totally count that as a cable i mean i know it's not officially a cable but it's a really cool technique to learn we actually have already, um, one of the months previous was uh, use a different technique or learn a new skill, um, but this is so fun. I urge you to go learn how to do it. It's a really great way to add some texture to a hat, especially right after the ribbing section. What a cool place for this little like element in the design. I think it's just awesome. So definitely, if you wanna use this in one of your September hats and learn a new skill, do it. Ow, whack myself with needles in the face. I will count it, it's awesome. Definitely check out Paper Tiger. Have I mentioned Paper Tiger? And Diana Walla, she's amazing. A little YouTube channel recommendation. She doesn't have a podcast per se. She just does a lot of um, kind of informational videos, tutorials, but she's just a, a wealth of knowledge about this kind of knitting. So I'm really excited about that. It's living in my French Supply Company field bag. Ugh, yeah, just ugh, can't wait to continue working on this. So fun. So let's go ahead and move on to my last work in progress that I'm gonna share with you guys today. Okay, so this work in progress, along with two other cast ons that I'm not gonna share with you guys today, I'm gonna wait and share with you guys on the next episode of the podcast, is are currently living in my brand new fringe supply company porter bin. Um, oh, you guys, I am obsessed with this enormous project bag. It's more a knitting basket than it is a project bag, really. I, I mean, it's huge. I have um, three, so I'll, can it, spoiler alert, I'll have, I'm gonna get this neon green rag out of the way. I use these like microfiber towels to clean my glasses because they are the only things that clean my glasses without getting streaks. And so if I keep it in here, it takes away from the really pretty, look of my pad or my projects but I have three um sweater projects going in here one I'm going to share with you guys today two you're gonna have to wait for um but this thing is amazing so if you have yet to purchase a fringe supply company porter bin when you find that you have an extra 80 something dollars to burn on one of these then you go get yourself one because they are amazing love it so much lots of really great pockets for you know holding all of your patterns this is the work in progress section isn't it all right I have a couple other little acquisition goodies that I'm gonna share with you guys in a little bit, but right now let's go ahead and talk about my next work in progress. Now, you may recognize the yarn that I'm using for this. I'm gonna go ahead and put this guy back up on the shelf. This is my Patton's Classic Worsted um, yarn that I have in this really beautiful charcoal gray color. Um, this is the yarn that I was using for my Stash Buster cardigan, uh, excuse me, Stash Buster pullover. It was not a cardigan, it was just a sweater. Um, but, so I don't know what happened when I decided I was going to knit this sweater and when I cast it on the sweater. And, and I'm gonna tell you now, I'm definitely not, or it previously was not the best at doing gauge uh, swatches or swatching for projects. <laughs> and shame on me, and I'll tell you why. I kind of learned this the hard way. Um, the reason why I, I didn't typically swatch was because in the past, I when I have swatched, I always have hit gauge like the first time. I just felt like I had this like, my tension was pretty average. And so it I always did a pretty good job of hitting gauge when I used the needles and I used the yarn that was called for in the pattern. If I added a different yarn, I would, I would swatch and it wouldn't always work out. Um, and I would have to make adjustments that way. But I think I got kind of like high on my horse about my tension, thinking that, oh, it's gonna be fine. I'm using the yarn that it calls for. I'm using the needles that it calls for. Everything's gonna work out. Yeah, well, that doesn't always, that's not always the case, especially if you've recently changed the way that you knit. Um, and about two years ago, I went from throwing my yarn to flicking my yarn. And I think what happened is that my, um, my tension changed and it caused my gauge to become, or my tension to become a lot looser. And it's much more comfortable, the, the way that I knit is way more comfortable than it was before and it's much faster, but I think that that comfort and that 
speed and ease cause my hands to relax a little bit, cause my tension to loosen up. So that's definitely something something to consider. If you're used to a particular kind of tension um, at a certain point and then you change your style of knitting, you're definitely going to need to get used to a different you know tension because things change. So anyway, when I cast it onto that Stash Buster sweater that I was working on previously, I um, maybe I measured myself at the time because I know I was pregnant at the time and I know I was far enough along that my body shape was different. Um, and so I don't know if I took those measurements. I mean, I don't know why I would have taken those measurements when I'm not gonna be that size forever. Um, but the sweater, I decided to measure the sweater the other day because I was holding it up and I was thinking like this no longer looks suitable like this looks really really big and I measured it and it was way too big um even if I had taken it in a little bit when I finished and uh you know put it all together it just it would have been way too big and so I um decided that I'm not even gonna try to think about how I can modify it I was just gonna frog it because I was losing interest in it I guess it had been so long since I worked on it that I kind of just lost interest in it um, and there had been other things that I had really become interested in recently that could that could be knitting with that yarn. So anyway, I just frogged it. It was much too big. Same thing with my Marlebon cardigan, which I'll talk about more on the next episode. That also got frogged for the same reason. I really hope I wasn't using those current measurements, but because both of those projects I cast it onto when I was, I think, seven to eight months pregnant, which would be crazy if I had used those measurements. But I've lost, since my son was born in March, I've lost a lot of that weight. And so um, that those things just weren't going to fit anymore. And so I have to kind of adjust, you know, my sizing. And that's a good thing. That's always a good thing. But it was frustrating to have to frog it. But it was good because it allowed me the opportunity to cast onto something that was inspiring me, that I was really interested in now. And it allowed me an opportunity to do a proper gauge swatch and to realize that my tension has changed a little bit. And now I feel comfortable going forward swatching prior to doing a project like this, but also just knowing that my tension is a little bit different. So the project that I have replaced the Stash Buster sweater with is the Veronica Cardigan by Shannon Cook. And you guys, I am so excited about this. I love this cardigan. I'm going to pop a picture of it up here so you can really see it in all its glory. Um, I've had this in my library for a little while. I bought the pattern um, a while ago, uh, not that long, maybe about three, four months ago, beginning of the summer. Um, and I really wanted to cast it on, but I couldn't justify doing it because I had the other sweaters going you know, whatever. So when I realized that that sweater wasn't going to work out, this was going to be the first thing that I jumped into. I was just watching the Hey Sister podcast and I'm like a big fat copycat, like the hoopla hat. I'm copying Kristen over on Yarngasm. And then the Hey Sister podcast, Rachel is working on a Veronica cardigan and hers is beautiful. Um, so yeah, like just you get all of the inspiration to do these things when you see other people working on them as well. So, um, that's kind of something else that pushed me over the edge. So I decided I was gonna cast on to the Veronica cardigan. So that is what is going on here. I'm in the middle of a row right now. And so just like in my last episode when I had to like knit to the end of a row so I could show you, you know, the piece in all of its glory. I think that's what I'm gonna have to do right here. This knit is so much fun. It's just pleasure knitting, it's comfort knitting, it's nice texture, there's enough there to like provide interest. It's not just a whole bunch of stockinette, which there is nothing wrong with that. Um, it's just a really cool knit. I don't know, it's super, super easy and fun to work on and it's great for fall knitting because it's a piece that you'll pop off the needles pretty quickly and have to wear in the fall and winter. I don't know, you guys, it's just, it's everything. I'm really excited about this. And it's working up beautifully in Patton's Classic Worsted. So this calls for, um, it calls for a worsted weight yarn and the yarn suggested is Yoth Yarns um, in the 100% Rambouillet Merino um, worsted weight yarn, which is a beautiful yarn. Yoth is really beautiful. Um, but I didn't have that and I wasn't going to buy that because I had all of this other, you know, Patton's Classic Worsted that I needed to use in my stash and it is working as a beautiful substitute. And it's a great budget yarn if you, you know, don't want to drop that kind of money on a sweater's quantity of wool. So I love it. So let me go ahead and get to the end of this row and I can hold this up so you can see what I've gotten so far. This pattern, it's worked all in one piece and it has this portion um, where you kind of add stitches. You do a cable cast on to add, you know, like 45 stitches to your piece. 
and then you end up with this like really long random strip of knitted fabric that slowly grows you know compared to the piece that you just created that is pretty significant I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second but it's kind of like obnoxious at first because you want to have this really big like voluminous piece of knitted fabric so it makes you feel like you actually have like a garment going and then you all of a sudden have this like strip <laughs> of knitted fabric attached to it. I don't know if the, any of this is making sense. It's going to make a lot more sense in a second when I show you what I'm talking about. But um, I really, really love working on this. It's so much fun. Very soothing and therapeutic. Okay, so this is that strip I'm talking about. <laughs> so I had, um, I'm working up the front right now. So this is the front and then the shawl collar is kind of being created here. So over here this ribbing is the shawl collar and it goes up the front and then you get to um, the section where you have to cast on some stitches and you're creating the back. So this little strip when you cast on those stitches you have this really nice you know blanket of fabric happening right here and then all of a sudden you have this like oddball like extension that is added on right here and it's just kind of like I don't know, it feels like random when you're holding it in your hands, um, but I love this. And you can see the really pretty texture that's created. It's this really nice, you know, kind of a ribbing, but it's more like kind of like a texture with the, the like the pearl bumps are just creating a little bit of a, a, like a ridge. That's pretty much what it is. It's not really ribbing as much as it's like just a ridge, if you will. So that's really lovely. I'm enjoying it. I, as soon as I'm holding it in my hands, I'm just compelled to work on it. So that's kind of what I'm going to do for a second. But um, what I really love about this, and I think moving forward when it comes to garment knitting, which is kind of where I want to take my knitting moving forward, I have to, you have to take into consideration where you live and your climate. And not all of us live in like Arctic climates or where it's really cold or even where it snows in the winter at all. Um, and yeah, we get snow here occasionally, but usually when that happens, it's kind of more of a novelty than anything else. Um, but the weather in the winter time here, it gets cold. Like it, some some stuff happening out there with the children. Um, it definitely gets cold, but it doesn't get so crazy cold that you can't just cover up with a really nice wooly sweater. Most of the time, a really nice wooly sweater is all you need to throw over a long sleeve t-shirt or you know, a regular t-shirt or even a, you know, a tighter fitting sweater. Like that's pretty much all you need. You don't need much else than that. So this was kind of a perfect piece to have for the fall wardrobe for here because it doesn't, you know, it's drapey, it's roomy, you can throw it over anything, um, and it's it's gonna keep you warm in the crisper days that we get here, but it's not gonna, you know, I guess be too stifling. My husband is out there with the kids right now. He, um, he actually stayed home from work today to get some other things done and to help me with you know some work that we needed to do here with the fiber for the people business and so he's out there right now with the kids and it sounds like they're having a really great time um ronin our six month old is teething right now and so he's going through that phase of just being really drooly and kind of not crying he's definitely not a big crier but just kind of vocalizing i don't even know it's like he's just shouting but he's not really unhappy it's just like he's just shouting and working those vocal cords <laughs> and I think that's what he's doing out there right now um but yeah so it's nice hearing them out there playing and knowing that they're having a good time and I'm okay with that I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing anything because I get to do that all the other days um, I'm really hoping that this will be, I'm not, not hoping, I know it'll be finished in time for Stitches SoCal in November, so I'm definitely going to be wearing this to Stitches SoCal. I mean, if I'm super lucky, I'll have this thing done by next weekend when I go to Vogue Knitting Live in San Francisco, because it's going to be beautiful in San Francisco. I've been looking at the weather in San Francisco recently, and I think the last week the highs were in the low 70s. <laughs> like, what? Like, that's, like, for us, that's, like, in the midst of fall weather for us. Um, so that's fantastic. So I'm excited to wear some hats, um, some cozy accessories while I'm there. And if this guy is finished in time, I will have this as well. So that's super exciting. Definitely let me know if you're gonna be at Vogue Knitting Live this weekend or next weekend, because I'd love to see you there. I'm gonna be passing out little goodies. Um, so if you see me, come and say hi. 
Uh, and maybe you'll see me wearing my Veronica cardigan. Who knows? We'll see if I'm working on it at the rate that I'm working on it now, because I usually knit on this whenever I find a free minute, um, then it will definitely be done. But anyway, that is my Veronica cardigan. Definitely recommend it if you have yet to cast on and if you have an interest in a nice blousey, loose fitting cardigan, it's uh, right down that alley. So that is the Veronica cardigan by Shannon Cook. <laughs> done an acquisition segment in quite some time and I wanted to do it today because I have some um, some things I want to share with you that I've picked up recently I've just I've shared with you my porter bin so I'm not gonna go over that again but I do have a couple of books that I want to share that I just added to my library plus um, a new notebook that I want to talk to you guys about so first thing um, I picked this up along with my crochet kaleidoscope book that I talked about in the beginning of the podcast this is the Japanese stitches unraveled book um, this is by Wendy Bernard, and she's the book, um, excuse me, she's the author of the Knitting All Around Stitch, Stitch Dictionary. I actually have that in my library um, back here. It's She gives you, um, st it's a stitch dictionary, but she tells you how to do it in the round, flat, um, bottom up, top down, all of that. And that's kind of what she's doing in this book as well, except this is full of stitch patterns that she found in a Japanese stitch pattern book and translated into um, into English. And so there's lots of really great, you know, charts and stitch patterns in here that are uncommon um, and not very popular. I mean, I guess you could say that they might be different to you and new to you um, and inspiring and unique. And so I was really taken by this because I've been playing around with the idea of, you know, working up some some patterns with different stitch patterns doing some very light designing. I am not an aspiring knitwear designer, um, but it's hard not to want to dabble when you're surrounded by it all the time. And so I've been playing with the idea of dabbling with that. And so this was kind of a cool, like inspiring resource, but there's some really beautiful, you know, stitch patterns in here and some designs. There's some patterns in here for, um, you know, items that you can knit as well. But I want to show you a couple of these because they're really unique, really beautiful. And I think the one that I wanted to show you was towards the back. Um, let's see. Oh, like this one. I mean, you may have seen these. I don't know. I just think they're so pretty. So I'm just going to show you the swatch um, so you can see. But just like, look at that. How gorgeous is that? Oh, so pretty. Um, there was another one. I should have flagged them. I don't know why I didn't think to put little post-it notes on here. Oh, this one. It's like the same color yarn too. What? Like, look at that. It's so beautiful. And oh yeah. And look at this one on the back. Like how fun would that be to like rib, do some like ribbing and then have that motif kind of running through your design. I don't know, really cool. I think when you wanna start dabbling in designing, I think a really great place, a, a good jumping off point for being inspired um, is to not only look at other people's designs, but just to pick up a stitch pattern book because the swatches are so inspiring because what you think about is not only, um, the swatch that you're seeing in front of you, you start kind of creating these ideas in your mind of what would surround that design. So for example, you would see something like this and then you would become inspired by what you could do around that, what you could add to that so that it stood out beautifully. So that's kind of what I love about stitch dictionaries are the swatches, the photos of the swatches, because that's what's going to inspire you the most and I think this is a really cool resource so I wanted to share that with you guys and then I'm not going to go into great detail about this one only because I know you've probably heard about this it's sold over a million copies it says right on the but front I finally got my very first copy of Vogue Knitting the Ultimate Knitting Book the you know completely revised and updated version I probably am one of the last people in this community to get this book um, but it is an amazing like wealth of information about just everything knitting and um, it's nice to have something like this and you know I've had like I have lots of books like over here on my shelves um, lots of different resources on just basic knitting information but it's kind of nice to have one big book and it's almost like a coffee table book where all of that information is right there for you so I'm really excited about this gotta love it really cool plus it looks really neat um, yeah, definitely coffee table book. We don't have um, a coffee table per se. We have a big ottoman bench, so I can't really leave it there, but 
I like to leave it back here um, in my little library, which you may have noticed um, off topic, but you may have noticed that things look a little bit different back here. Um, I had my husband install a couple new shelves. You can see one down here and then one is back here so that I had more room to put my knitting books. My knitting books for the longest time had been in Ronan's room um, because I didn't have a lot of space over here for them. Um, and so he created some extra shelves for me and I have a place for my porter bin, for my knitting books and various different knickknacks like that. So that's kind of nice. So this is definitely going to stay back there on my new shelves. Okay. And the last thing that I want to share with you that I picked up, um, is this notebook. And so it's just, you know, a really cute notebook and I got this at Target. It's not super fancy and that's not, I guess not the real reason why I'm sharing this with you, but it's just a fun, you know, notebook that's, you know, inspiring, I guess you could say. If there's something about having a really cute notebook that you like to look at that inspires you to use it. But the reason I got that is more why I'm sharing this with you. So after receiving several questions and inquiries from people who watch the podcast about um, patterns that I'm working on, hook sizes that I'm using, and not being able to direct them to any reliable like source on Ravelry, I've decided I need to like shape up and start using Ravelry the way that it was intended to be used so that people who do watch the podcast here have a place to go where they could see the things that I'm working on, the needle sizes, the yarn choices, all of that, um, because it's such an amazing resource for people to use. And so I decided not only am I going to shape up my Ravelry notebook, which I have, um, everything for the most part is completely up to date over there, but I'm also going to start keeping a physical project notebook. And I think I saw this a long time ago on an episode of Inside Number 23 with Katie. She has, I think, um, a project notebook that she uses. I think I might be wrong, but she, there's somebody and I, I'm almost positive it's Katie has a really gorgeous notebook that she uses where she illustrates, takes notes on all of her projects, shows, you know, finished object photos on the pages. She uses like really cool, um, what is this? It's called washi tape. It's just like the cute, like decorative, you know, tapes that you can use. Um, she uses really cute things like that. I don't know, and I remembered that, and I've thought about that, I've known about that for a long time, but I've just never taken the time to really do that. And I think that's because when it's come to working on different knitting projects in the past, up until the very recent past, um, there's never really been an approach to you know my knitting projects. I haven't like taken an approach to what I'm working on, like having a purpose for it, whatever. There's not been like really a direction. It's just kind of, um, you know, fly by the seat of my pants, you know, see something fun on Ravelry, buy the pattern and just cast onto it. Whether it's something I'm gonna use in my wardrobe, give as a gift or, or what, or whether I have the yarn for it, what have you. So I think that by keeping my Ravelry page um, or my Ravelry notebook up to date, and then also having this, is really gonna help me move towards a better approach up to my knitting. And I think it's kind of nice to be able to come to these realizations at this point in the year when, you know, January is still a few months away. So you don't have to have that pressure of coming up with a New Year's resolution and starting that New Year's resolution like that day. I'm kind of working into this like resolution gradually from now until, you know, whenever. And, and so this is like my way of doing that. So kind of like my resolutions are, I wanna work more garment knitting into my repertoire. I wanna, you know, in increase my skill set, improve my skill set, grow my skill set. Um, but I wanna keep track of all of the things that I work on. I, when I work on knitting projects, and I think this is why I'm able to talk in great at great length about the projects that I'm working on, I'm thinking of so many little things regarding the project. I notice little details. I pay attention to the way the yarn behaves, like my needle sizes, how I had to go up or down needle sizes. There's so many different little things that I'm constantly thinking of, and I so often think, I wish I had a pen and paper right next to me so I could write this down, um, or I start taking notes on the actual pattern you know, this and that. And I figured why not have a diary where you can keep all of this information in one nice and clean place and have it right next to you while you're working as opposed to having your computer right next to you, you know, and typing things into Ravelry. That's just not very feasible. 
So I thought I'm gonna start doing it with a notebook. And not only is it gonna be a really great place to keep this information, it's gonna make it easier for me to communicate it to you here on the podcast, to reference back to my notebook, and then also to add the information to Ravelry to keep it up to date or whatever. So, but the point is, is just having a place where I can take notes on the projects that I'm working on that's physical, it's right there, it's at the ready, um, to keep me like honest, to keep me working towards like the goal, like my to keep me moving towards a goal um, for my, you know, knitting repertoire, for my my practice, I guess you could say. Does that make any sense? You know, you have to kind of like establish an approach to what you're doing, I guess. Or else we just start doing things all willy-nilly and all we're left with is a Ravelry notebook full of, you know, accessories. <laughs> and that's kind of, I guess that's kind of what I feel has happened to my Ravelry notebook lately. And there aren't enough challenging projects, there aren't enough skill building projects you know, to satisfy me. So that's kind of what I'm doing with this. So wanted to share that with you guys. What do you think about that? Are you kind of in that same position? Do you find value in having like an approach to your knitting, to your crochet, whatever? Do you plan out what you're gonna work on based on what's gonna fit in your wardrobe? Or do you find that you're more spontaneous? I don't know, that's just kind of things that I've been thinking about right now. So I thought I would share that with you guys. So those are some acquisitions that I have. I do have some yarn um, stash enhancement uh, that I'll be sharing with you on the next episode of the podcast because it's more, you know, in regards to some other cast-ons that I have that I'm going to be sharing with you. But definitely keep posted on Instagram. I'll be sharing those on Instagram prior to the next episode of the podcast coming out. But I didn't want to overload this episode um, today because I knew it would be chocked full of various different things. So keep an eye out for those on the next episode of the podcast. Uh, but that's it for acquisitions for today. <music> All right, you guys, I am so excited for this little segment of the podcast because you guys have expressed so much enthusiasm about doing a little podcast book club um, that I can't wait to get started. So you guys, it is going on. We are going to be doing a little podcast read along or podcast book club, whatever you want to call it, for the book Three Bags Full by Leonie Swan. I am so excited. I'm just so happy that you guys are really into this and you guys are really into it. Like we have so many people that are jumping on board this little read along or listen along, depending on how you're gonna be absorbing this. Um, so I'm super excited. So let me go ahead and give you guys the deets. And I'm um, putting this segment towards the end of the podcast because I know not everybody's interested. Not everybody wants to do this. So you can watch the podcast and then when this pops up, you can either you know pass on by um, so you can skip to the end where I say sayonara or you can just stop watching the podcast. It's completely up to you. Um, but just so you know, there is going to be a local um, quilt shop that I feature at the end of the episode. So maybe you're not interested in this, uh, just fast forward this segment so you can check out that local quilt shop at the end. So just want to let you know that there is something after this, but I do want to keep this at the end so it's not in the middle where there's people that may not be involved or interested. So, okay, moving forward. So October 1st is the launch of our book club. We are going to begin, we can begin reading October 1st. Now we are going to make this kind of a regulated, I hate that word, that sounds really bad, but kind of a paste, that's better. Um, we're gonna paste this out. So we have a certain number of pages or chapters, however we wanna do this, um, to read between podcasts. So my podcasts are every two weeks. So that means that every two week period we'll have a milestone or a benchmark that we have to meet. So that way when we get to the podcast and I chit chat a little bit about what we've read, we're all up to date. And I think that the best way um, that I want to, the way that I want to do this um, is that in between the two podcasts, I want you guys to submit questions to the read along thread on Ravelry um, regarding the reading. And that doesn't have to be like, we don't have to make this like really intense or anything. But what's going to ultimately drive this book club um, is going to be the questions that you guys ask in the chatter thread. We all will ask questions. Every two weeks we'll have a benchmark that we have to meet, we have to get to that point, we have to stop. 
You don't want to read ahead. We want to try and stay on track. Um, but during that two week period between podcast episodes, we want to log into Ravelry and make sure we're asking at least, let's say we want to ask at least three questions and you definitely want to participate in answering questions as well. Um, so get that chatter thread. We'll call it a, we'll, we'll just call it, you know, our book club thread, um, but get the chatter going over there. Um, make it interesting, make it fun because that's, what's going to make people want to participate. That's just what makes reading a book fun is being able to chat with people about the story. So take advantage of that, ask some questions, answer some questions. And then, like I said, on the following episode of the podcast, I'll talk about some of the chatter that has been going on in the chatter thread. So I hope that makes sense. Um, the project that you choose to work on while you're listening, share it on Instagram and we're gonna call it the Wool Needles Hands Book Along or WNH Book Along 2018. So share whatever project that you're working on and talk about how you're working on it while you're listening to this because you're participating in the Wool Needles Hands Book Along 2018 or WNH Book Along 2018. Does that make sense? If that doesn't make sense or you have any questions, please ask down in the comment thread. I'm kind of, this is all coming together um, organically for me. So this is our first time doing it. I definitely think we're gonna be doing this with another book in the future. So keep that in mind. If you have suggestions, please let me know. Um, but that's what I have so far for this. We're starting October 1st. I haven't quite decided what our benchmark is going to be um, when we start. Keep posted on, Inst uh, not on Instagram, keep posted on Ravelry for that information. And then on the next episode of the podcast, I'll provide more information on that there. And we can come up with other things as we go too. Perhaps we'll do some kind of, you know, prize giveaway. I don't know, we'll have fun with it. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So let me know what you guys think if you have any questions, but otherwise that's um, the status on our read along so far and I'm super super excited about it all right guys if you've been watching the podcast for a while you know that I host a local yarn store call to action which is where I ask you the viewer to go out into your community and get footage of your local yarn shop or craft shop or wherever inspires you to send it to me here at the podcast at woolneedleshands at gmail.com that email is down below in the description box so that I can share your local shop here on the podcast this submission that I have for you guys today is actually a quilt store in Hendersonville North Carolina this was submitted by Darley Dullian who is at She's a Maniac on Ravelry. This shop is called Beginnings and it is run by Lynn Easler. And I wanna to read to you the little information that was sent to me by Darlie um, about how this store got started. Okay, this little story is written by Lynn who is the owner of the shop and it says, years ago, my husband and I were impatiently waiting for a greatly anticipated adoption of a baby. To help pass the time, I took a beginning quilt class which turned out to be a life-changing event. When I finished my first block, I quickly ran to my husband and told him I had found what I could do the rest of my life, quilt. 22 years and 18 children later, I've come to realize what a gift quilting was to me. It gave me creative outlets when I was surrounded by toddlers and it provided many wonderful friendships when I had feelings of isolation. Now I bring that inspiration and fondness with me to work as I share my favorite craft every day. I hope to be able to encourage other new sewers and to provide a place where quilters can gather and build new friendships. So this is footage provided by Darlie of Beginnings Quilt Shop in Hendersonville, North Carolina. so much Darlie for this lovely submission. Here is a quick look at a quilt that Darlie just recently completed. It is absolutely gorgeous and I'm really happy to be able to share this with you guys. So please, if you have a shop that you would like to have featured here on the podcast, go out, get some footage, ask for permission first and then send it to me here and let the people know, let the uh, proprietors of the business know where they can see um, their shop featured on YouTube. And I appreciate it, you guys. Thank you so much for working with me to kind of um, collaborate on curating this particular portion of the podcast that really makes it so special. All 
right guys, that is all I have time for today. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me here on the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey channel. Keep an eye on the channel. I will be uploading the next series in the Colorfest Sock Set Club vlog that I've been recording. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, definitely check out the link that comes up at the end of the podcast so you can see um, the vlog series that I do for how I come up with my colorways for the Colorfest Subscription Club for Fiber for the People yarn. Also, don't forget to check out the Fiber for the People shop update on Tuesday, September 18th. And if you will be at Vogue Knitting Live in San Francisco next weekend, let me know and keep a lookout because I will be there and I would love to meet you in person. It's so nice, like I said, as always spending this time with you guys. I'm gonna go and take a load off and work on some of my projects. I'm super excited to get down to business on some of these really fun, inspiring projects. And also to put that little project notebook together so I can share it with you guys on the next episode of the podcast. Happy knitting, happy whatever it is that you're doing. And until next time, guys, bye.